Once again, it's time to bring in my colleague and social media reporter, Mariama Diaro. Mariama, take it away, Mariama. Uh, well, thanks, Shaka. AGOA and other initiatives may be impacted by automatic across-the-board cuts to all discretionary spending in the U.S. federal budget. The cuts, also known as the sequester, started in March. Top officials at the International Monetary Fund have implied that the sequester would potentially affect African economies directly through reduced foreign aid and indirectly through lower export receipts, remittances, and foreign investment should there be a significant slowdown in the U.S. economy. Our question of the week asked, how do you think African governments should respond to the impact of the budget cuts from the U.S.? Sequester. Thanks for using all our social media platforms to communicate to us. Let's begin with a comment from Klaus Kualongo, a human resources admin at the University of Dodoma in Tanzania. He says, African gov governments should do three things. And number one would be raise tax collections to increase domestic revenues to supplement dependence from donors. Number two, substitute U.S. donations with grants from other fast-growing countries like Brazil, Russia, China, and South Africa. And finally, number three, encourage domestic investors and macro producers to increase the GDP so products can be sold abroad. And GDP, basically, they mean the gross domestic product of a country. We're going to move on to another comment that comes from Christian Twagira, from Kigali in Rwanda who says, in a briefly worded response to our question, basically, that Africa can sustain itself. Shaka, brief and to the point, but the first one had great suggestions. What do you think? I think that the suggestions are right on the money, uh, Mariama, because let's face it, uh, ever since I was a little kid, and uh, we're talking about when African countries began uh, gaining their, or regaining their political independence, Leaders there or rulers have been talking about uh, how Africa produces what it does not consume and consumes what it does not produce. You can't keep talking the talk. It is time to walk the talk, Mariama. Well, you're absolutely right. We actually have some more feedback. So let's move on to a posting from Stephen Dakalira, Dakalira let me get it right, in Blunt Tire in Malawi, who writes, it's about time that Africa graduated from being dependent on aid to independent. We are blessed with skills and resources. Now it's time to look within ourselves and see what will work for us. And finally, Abu Balo, a fan from Lusaka in Zambia says, I think Africa can survive without the aid of the US. It depends on how we will use our natural resources. Shaka, again, a lot of talk about changing management style this time. We have the natural resources, but basically we just need to manage it better. And if we do, maybe we won't even need foreign aid. Do you think that can actually ever happen, Shaka? Well, why not? Of course, uh, you know, society, of course, um, is not static, it is dynamic. What do you think, uh, uh, Karin? Well, I think that that's absolutely the future. However, right now, I'm going to fight very hard in Congress to end the sequestration mm -hmm. because, frankly, there is no reason for these across-the-board budget cuts. This is an ideological battle that is taking place in the United States over what type of government we want to have. And there are people in Congress who really don't believe that we should be involved in foreign affairs at all. As a matter of fact, we have a joke uh, in Congress about how much the U.S. budget is actually de dedicated to foreign aid. It's really only 1%, but there is the perception that it's 20%, 30%, or 40%. So while Africa struggles to be independent economically, mm -hmm. I'm going to continue to struggle here for U.S. to continue aid, but also increase trade. What about you, Agba, Agba, Julius? Yeah, I think uh, most of um, the audience has raised many great points about how Africa needs to be uh, independent in terms of uh, managing its resources well. 
better because there are many African countries who shouldn't be receiving aid. It's really ridiculous for countries uh, which are so highly blessed with mineral resources. But who does be... this aid benefit really? Because a lot of studies have been carried out, including your own think tank. They that's don't right. seem, frankly, to benefit the ordinary African. Definitely, that's right. So the first generation of aid administration, international aid administration, has not been, was not very successful. But uh, we are beginning to see a change, especially from the United States side, uh, where aid has now this, what we call now smart aid, that is targeted at doing specific things. I see. You we'll know. come back to that later. That's right. Thanks, Mariama, for bringing us this week's audience reaction. Well, that's all the feedback we have for now. We appreciate all the responses. Please keep them coming. And before I go, just a reminder, we would like to hear from you. So drop us a line at africatv at voanews.com. Once again, our email address is africatv at voanews.com. Or post a comment on our Facebook page. Just enter the keywords, Straight Talk Africa. Also, be sure to visit us online at voaafrica.com.